Hello, welcome to Day Off Gaming. I'm your host, Talion, and we are doing some The Longest Journey. And in the last episode, we got caught in a chaos storm, which is kind of our fault because we needed to get to the islands and we could not take a detour, or at least that was an executive decision by April. So we are now stuck here. This is all that's left afloat of the White Dragon. I'm either the luckiest person alive or the unluckiest person about to die a slow, horrible death. Yeah. And there's a little thing that keeps popping up. I'm a long way from anything. I didn't know the ocean could look so big. Oh, yeah. That might be one of the mermen I heard horror stories about. Hi. Do you speak Arcadian? Guess not. Doesn't seem so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic up close, though, does it? <laughs> yeah. He's popping its head up. You can touch it. Or attempt to touch it. Hey, come over here and let me pet you. <laughs> You're just like a seal, aren't you? <gasps> nope. Oh, bloody typical. I told her she didn't believe me. Girls always disappear on me. Always. <laughs> Poor crow. Alrighty. Well, April, what you got to say? Captured, kidnapped, abducted by mermen. I'm trapped underwater in a tiny little bubble of air. And why am I not panicking right about now? If I'm ever going to panic, this would be a good time. I'm claustrophobic and I have a fear of water. This situation combines all my phobias into one tidy little package. And yet, I feel relaxed. Like it's all going to be okay. It's going to work itself out. April, listen to me. You're screwed. How are you going to get out of this one? By using your head? Right. My head. That'll help me breathe underwater. No, what I need is some scuba diving equipment. Either that or gills. And I need to talk to these mer people, find out why they saw fit to rescue me and bring me here. Alright, well let's take a look around the room. The walls look organic. And those blue things. I think they're polyps of some kind. They live inside the wall and are part of the structure. National Geographic would go nuts over stuff like this. Hmm. This whole structure looks organic, and there are polyps living inside the walls. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. Huh. These polyps must process the oxygen in the water somehow. That's how I'm able to breathe in here. Hmm, okay. It's a drawing of a man cutting his finger open and squeezing some blood into a bowl together with some green, mossy stuff. Then he mashes it together and... Oh, gross! He dips a black pearl in it and eats it. That's barbaric! Maybe the stories about the cannibal merman were true after all. But hey, in the next one he seems capable of speaking fluently with the creatures that brought me here. I wouldn't mind that. Hmm. If it could get me the hell out of here. It's a drawing of a man. A human. Sticking a strange, polyp-shaped object into his mouth. Ugh! 
In the next drawing, he seems to be able to breathe underwater. Convenient, if somewhat radical. Alrighty. Can we leave? There's water out there. Lots of water. I'll just drown if I try to leave. Fine. Oh, we can touch him now. What we get? Polyp. It's the polyp I yanked out of the wall. Okay. April, suck it up. Oh, this is so disgusting, but I have to get out of here. I'm wet. They're about ready to get wetter. Go jump in the water. All right, let's go look around. They must have built that house specifically for air-breathing creatures like myself. I'm wet. Huh? It's a big seashell. Let me open it. There's a large black pearl inside the seashell. Okay. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. Hmm. The seaweed here is so okay. thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. Oh, look at that. Little city. Why did you bring me here? Lucky me, I'm stuck at the bottom of the sea with Bubbles the Mermaid. <laughs> there has got to be a way to communicate with these creatures. Yeah. It's a mer... person. God knows what sex it is, but I'm sure it's not the one that kidnapped me. That one had small uh, wings. Oh, it's this? a glowing green substance that's spread evenly across the walls, providing light and heat. Can we grab some? <laughs> I'm gonna assume yes. What's this? It's a pretty blue crystal. Can we grab it? Will she flip out? Can we grab that? Sorry. It's a spear. A harpoon, I guess it's called in maritime terminology. Well, she won't let us grab it, so... Okay. Alright, so we have a black pearl. It's a drawing of a man mixing some green, mossy stuff with his own blood. Okay. Applying the mixture to a black pearl and then eating the pearl. Afterwards, he's able to speak with the merman. Okay. So, guess what we get to do? We get to prick our finger. If this gets infected and I have to chew off my finger to fight the gangrene, I'm suing somebody. I do to save the world. Worlds. Right. Okay, we have this. The bled. And the pearl. Oh, nice. It's all glowy. The pearl has turned to golden color and it's glowing with magic. Nice. I've 
I've always had trouble swallowing pills, especially huge golden magical ones. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> well, let's see if it works now. Let's see if we can talk to the person. There we go. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, we understand. Weird. I have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I shouldn't be able to understand what you're saying. But I do. You have passed the two tests of the Gatherer, Landwalker. Breathing water and speaking the tongue of the Merum. You can serve us now. Uh, yeah, serve you. Serve you? You have been brought here to serve us as the gatherer of Tanyan. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> but what is Tanyan? What's Tanyan? Tanyan is life. Tanyan brings light to darkness and sustenance to our caves. Tanyan keeps the snapjaw from our children and heats us when it is cold. Tanyan is life. Yeah, why, yeah, why can't you do it yourself? I guess we can a ask all these questions. Where does Tanyan come from? Our gatherers collect it from the caves and shores of the islands, but there is less Tanyan to be found each season, and we need help. How does Tanyan do all those things you said? Tanyan provides warmth and light. It draws the harvest close. Harvest? The creatures of the sea that we eat, the golden tail, and the weed eye, and the sand eater, Fish? You're talking about fish. The harvest, yes. That is what we said. The harvest is drawn to the light and to the heat. But the snapjar are clever. They stay away. They know the light allows us better aim with our spears. Yeah, so why can't you do it yourself? Why can't you gather Tanyan yourself? We do. But we cannot move far from our cities. Or the Snapjaw will hunt us and eat us. If we travel in force, we leave our men and children without guard. And we cannot travel too close to the islands, or the wing demons may catch eye of us. They leave our gatherers alone though, so you have nothing to fear. Yeah, the wing demons. Who are those? Who are the wing demons? Ugly, leathery creatures who defy nature to fly up there in the sky. They are evil and live to destroy our people. If you haven't uh, figured it out, the mermen are basically a matriarchy. Don't the Snapjaw kill the gatherers? Rarely. Your meat is bitter and tough. Not soft and tender like ours. I won't ask how you know that. <laughs> I think I've learned enough about Tan Yen for now. You have learned nothing, but your training will teach you what you need to know. Yeah, what are you people called? Are your people called the Miram? We are the Miram. Most landwalkers call us Mermen or Mer people, but the Miram is our name in truth. And who, yeah, who are you? Who are you, ma'am? We are the queen of the third city of the Miram, enlightened keeper of the Tanyan, protector of the light. I'm sorry, your... Your Majesty, I really had no idea you were a queen. We are just a queen. Our function is to serve the people, to light our cities, provide food for our men and children, and to protect them from the snapjaw that hunt us in the dark. Yeah, what about any ships? Do you know where my ship went down? The vessel you foolishly travel in above the water 
it rests not far from the city, just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble where you were first brought. I think it is dead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. Do you know the island of Elias? Yes. We know the island of Elias. Our gatherers find Tanyan there, and the Merrim once had a city in the shallow waters below it. Can you bring me there? Until your training is complete, you cannot go gathering. We cannot risk losing you to the Snapjaw, or to have you desert your duties to our people. How long will my training take? Six cold oceans. Six years? Sure, that makes sense. <laughs> Everything in this world takes ages. Yeah, six years is a long time. I've been told that you worship an old god who lives in the deep. How did you come by this forbidden knowledge? I picked it up on my way here. Could you take me to him? You? No, we cannot. Unless you are Miram, you are not even allowed to speak of our sleeping god. Hmm, okay. Well? Thanks for your time. We will call on you soon to begin your service. Until then, you should stay inside the Landwalker's bubble and away from the dark waters where the Snapjaw lurk. Alrighty. Past our... there it is. Oh, hello! The jaws keep into the shadows, waiting for me to get close enough to attack. Well, we can't go that way. Back to the city. Okay. What is this thing? It's the crystal I took from the Marion's home. Hmm. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. do anything with anything. I better win. Well, now that we can talk to him, maybe we can actually pick up the spear. Leave the spear be. It belongs to the water still. Sorry. It's a water store. Can we talk for a minute? Yes, Gatherer. We may. Who or what is the water stiller? The water stiller is in our prophecies. She is the land walker who will make us a people united and end all strife. So you're at war with other Merrim? No. And so the time for the water stiller is still to come. We are at peace with other Miram. Hmm. Yeah, what else can you tell us? What else can you tell me about the Water Stiller? She will come among us by providence, and she will take something from us that we have kept hidden for many generations. And what will we take from you? What is it the Water Stiller will come to take from you? We do not know. But she will open up the ancient shrine and bring light to the darkness. She will destroy a snap jaw with her spear, give witness of her mission, and then she will reunite us. She sounds like a swell person. <laughs> she is the water stiller. She is prophecy. Hmm. Okay. Well. Yeah. Where did you say I could find the shipwreck? Just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble. Okay. That's Thanks right. for your time. My time is yours, Gatherer. Alrighty. Well. 
Yeah, there's something back here, but I don't know if we can get to it yet. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. Okay. Can we do anything? Do we have anything that will... Can we blow it? Nope. <laughs> Big seashell. Okay. Is there anything in here that we're missing? Okay. There was a sound like something unlocked. Because occasionally you'll hear that noise in the background that usually means something unlocked. They must have built that um, house specifically for air breathing creatures like myself. The sea seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost need deliberate. something to cut it, I would think. Because it looks like there's something back here. Nothing that we missed back here, did is there? I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. Snapjaws keep into the shadows, waiting for me to get close enough to attack. Yeah, go in there. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> All right, so there is nothing down here that we're missing. Okay. <clears throat> well. Oh, I know what we could possibly do. Let's ask her about this crystal. Do you need this? No. It is of no value to us. Where did you find it? It looks very old. I believe one of the children found it just outside the city. Not far from the Landwalker's bubble. Among the seaweed by the rocks. We have used it for decoration in our hall. But you are welcome to it. Consider it a gift, Gatherer. Well, appreciate it. It's a, it's a big seashell. Oops. See, now we can do something with seaweed. Okay. Here's another one of those crystals buried in the sand among the seaweed. Hmm, okay. There's an entrance to a cave back here. Judging by the amount of seaweed, it's a long time since anybody's been in there. Well, let's go check it out. Okay. What do we have here? Looks like there's a couple more crystals. Each one looks a little different, too. Okay. It's a long spear with hooks. Probably a harpoon, then. It's inscribed with the image of a wave, probably representing water. Yeah. This inscription looks like a fish. This inscription looks like a huge pyramidic structure with an eye in the middle. Yeah. This ring is inscribed with the image of a bird. It's stuck. I don't think it's supposed to move. Oh, okay, so these all move. Okay. So what is this one? This ring is inscribed with the image of a bird. Okay.
Nope, I don't want to move the bird. I want to move firing. And. Oops. Bird. Oh. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. I'm not sure spear and pot ring why that belongs together. But the bird. Wait. It's a Miram ring? Was that what that was? Oh, okay. Alright. Now the fun part. Um. Figuring out this puzzle. This puzzle was always a big pain. Okay, so we have this stuff. Okay. What? Okay, so we have a spear, a mountain, and a fish. Spear, a mountain. Okay. So what if that goes here? So it's facing those with that facing that. What's you? Fish, waves, and mountain. Okay. All right, so one, two, let's try that. I, it doesn't seem like it'd be right because it's facing opposite. I could be wrong though. Okay, yeah, let's grab you. Okay, let's put you here. Okay. Let's try you here. Let's no. Okay. I feel like these two are accurate. So let's pick you up, pick you up, and let's swap you maybe. Okay. Spear to fish and then that's aiming there that's aiming there and then there okay <clears throat> oh wow it looks like some kind of visual history of the Marum people According to this first tablet, oh my god, it turns out the Marum came to Earth inside a type of spaceship from another planet. They're aliens? <laughs> Not that anything should surprise me at this point, but still, they look very different back then though. It must have been a long time ago. Their ship looks to have been a living thing, according to these drawings. Wait a minute, could this be their ancient god, one of the dragons? I think it has to be. After they arrived on Earth, their species divided in two. One crawled into the sea, the other onto land. What does that mean? Hmm. This must be a while later, because the Marum look like they do today. At least the ones who went into the sea do. The other ones? They have wings. If I'm going to guess, I'd say that the ones who went to live on land became the Alation, which means the Marum and Alation are related. In this one, they're living close to each other and in peace. And it seems they share equally in the production of Tan Yen, which attracts fish for both peoples to eat. Then something happens. Or, it looks like, and the Marum and Alation move away from each other. 
in this last one, Tanyan is beginning to become scarce, and the Marum are losing many of their young ones to the Snapjaw. They fear the elation, and they forget their common heritage. At the very end, there's a prophecy, I think. The Marum and the elation joining hands once again. When they do, Tanyan becomes plentiful and both people prosper. Because they're not splitting up the resource of Tin Yin. And there's a symbol over here. What is that? It's a circular indentation framed with the image of two dragons biting each other's tails. Almost exactly like the markings on my talisman. Hmm. The crystals on the altar light up the entire cave. Nice. This puzzle, uh, for reference, when I first did this puzzle the first time, it took me so long. I actually expected it still to take me a while to figure it out because even after playing it a couple times, I still cannot remember the exact combination of how that goes. So I'm amazed I actually succeeded as quickly as I did with it. Can we talk for a minute? Yes, Gatherer. We may. Yeah, I found the cave. Why was the cave with the altar and the wall painting just outside the city abandoned? What? Show us this cave immediately. I lit the cave by placing the crystal from your palace together with three more crystals I found on the altar and moving the stone rings into their correct positions. Can it be that you are? But you are a gatherer. You cannot be she. Who? Who can't I be? The water stiller. She who, by prophecy, will deliver us from strife and unite us as one people. She who will uncover the ancient shrine. Looks pretty ancient to me. Yeah. This is the shrine, yes. And you have brought light to the darkness as well. But the other prophecies, you have not fulfilled them. You have not proven yourself to be the water stiller yet. How can I do that? Come back with us and we will tell you. Well, we talked about the Water Stiller, but we'll have her go back through it. Who is the Water Stiller? She is of the prophecies. She will bring an end to strife and unite our people. How can I prove that I'm the Water Stiller? You have uncovered the ancient shrine and brought light to the darkness. But this could be just chance. You must show us the witness you carry of your mission to the balance. The talisman! Damn, I lost it when the storm hit us. You must also kill a snapjaw with a spear, and then you will have proven yourself to us. Once you have done this, we will aid you in your quest to make us one people. Where do I begin? Take this spear and slaughter a snapjaw. This must be done to prove your strength, and to prove you are of the Merum. Where do I find the snapjaw? If you are the water stiller, you will find a way. Well, we did find one. So. April, what's your thoughts? <clears throat> Thursday afternoon. The Merrim Queen believes I may be what they call the water stiller. Why not? After all, I am April Bandu Ambata, and I'll probably. I'm probably what the Venara called a. Kanga. Can Angla. So, why not the water stiller? Thing is, this time I have to prove it. The water stiller is supposed to uncover an ancient shrine and bring light to the darkness, which I've already done. Then I have to show some proof of my mission, the talisman, which the captain locked away in the chest, and kill a snapjaw. Kill a snapjaw? What am I, an Amazon honey woman person? I think not. I have a hard time smacking a fly, but if I want to get out of here, the talisman probably went down with the ship. I wonder how difficult it would be to get a hold of it. Well, we kind of found out already. As we tried to go into the ship 
and we encountered some resistance. I really hope this spear is really good at killing Snapjaws. I wonder if it shoots magic. Hey, why not? We are in the world of magic, right? Hi, Snapjaw. I have a spear to kill you with. Whoa! Come at me. Well, that was easy. <laughs> it's dead. I killed it. Bear grab uh, proof. I'll need something to bring back to prove that I killed the Snapjaw. This tooth will do just fine. Oh man, that's sharp. I had no idea Snapjaw had razor teeth. If I did, better not think about that now. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go into the shipwreck now. Hey, there it is. Glad it hung around. It's my talisman. What incredible luck. No kidding. I'm wet. Yes, you are. Being in the water, I would assume you being nothing else than wet. And miserable. Alright. We have the talisman. Here's proof of my mission. A magical talisman with the sign of the balance. It means that I'm the 13th guardian of the balance. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the water stiller. All right, there is something that we had to find that was... I forget. Can we talk for a minute? What are we missing? Yes, Gatherer. We may. Alright. Oh, Thanks for your have. time. Okay. My time is yours, Gatherer. But there is a slot in the cave, if I remember correctly, that looked like our talisman. So, I wonder... Yeah. What's in there? April, get out of the way. It's a small niche containing what appears to be a shard of a stone. It's a big seashell. I did not tell you to go out. Say it's that again. a small niche containing okay. what appears to be a shard of a stone. It's a piece of the stone disc. No, wait. It's only one half of a piece. It looks like it's been divided in two. Strange. Yeah, I'm gonna assume I know where the other half is. These tablets tell the story of how the Marum and Elation were once one people. They came to Earth inside an ancient dragon and lived in harmony, producing and sharing Ten Yen. Then war broke out, and the two peoples turned on each other, which caused a shortage of Ten Yen and the death of many Marum. There's a prophecy at the end. Yeah. One day, it seems, the Elation and Marum will reconcile and prosper. Alright. We have something to give you. Remember this? I've taken from you the object you've kept hidden for generations. It's part of the disc that will restore the balance and save the twin worlds from chaos. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the water stiller. Well, we've done just about everything. We have to go talk to your other people. Talk for a minute. Yes, Gatherer. We may. Um... I'd like to learn more about Tanyan. Certainly. 
What do you wish to learn? Thanks. I don't have any more questions about Ten Yen. Thanks for your time. All right. My time is yours, Gatherer. I thought we would have everything. Oh, shark tooth. Here's a tooth from the dreaded Snapjaw that guarded the shipwreck. Proof of my strength and courage. I forgot all about that proof. You have indeed fulfilled all but one of the prophecies. You might yet be the water stiller. We would not have thought she would come in our lifetime. Good. Then you'll take me to your sleeping god. There is but one more prophecy you must fulfill. There's more? Sure, there's always more. That's the fun part about prophecies. You must unite our people once again. But you said you were united, that there's no strife between Miram. The Water Stiller will come to bring our people together again, to unite us and save us. This has still not come to pass. Until you do so, the prophecies of the Water Stiller have not fully come to pass. Let's see, do we have anything? Yeah, but they're at war with the Malaysia. I know now what the prophecies mean when they say your people will be reunited. The Miram are at peace with each other, yes? But you're not at peace with the Alation. The Wind Demons. They are our enemies. Right now they might be, but it wasn't always like that. Not according to the carvings in the Temple Cave. What do you mean? Once upon a time, Long ago, the Miram and the Elation were one people. What? This is heresy. I'm just telling you what I saw in your temple. This was a very long time ago, and the one species soon divided in two. One sought refuge in the sea, the other on the winds. But both the Miram and the Elation were dependent on the other for various reasons, amongst them Ten Yen which was abundant where the two people lived in close proximity to each other. Apparently, there was peace between your two people for a very long time, but then something happened, something that caused a war to break out. Both the Elation and the Mira moved far away from each other, and ever since then, your people have had a tough time finding Tan Yen. I think the only way to save the Mira from a slow death, and the Elation as well probably, is to reconcile you with your... Uh, common ancestry. How can we believe you, Water Stiller? Your words are too outrageous, and the consequences, were you to be speaking the truth, are grave. If you don't believe me, check out the temple walls. The whole story has been recorded there, probably when you first came to this place. But what will our people say? What will they think when we tell them they are brothers and sisters to the winged demons? You're their queen, and so you'll have to make them understand and accept their heritage. As must the elation, I expect, and I don't think it will be any easier for them to come to terms with their history. You must go to them, then, to find if our temple speaks the truth, and if they are willing to speak with us like civilized people. I guess I must water stiller or not. If you don't reunite with them, you will die, eventually. We will bring you to the shores of their closest island, and we will await word from you on their answer. Does this mean you believe me? You are the water stiller. You are prophecy. We will follow your directions and fulfill our destiny. One of our people will bring you to Alais, a night's journey from here. Once there, you will find the Elation and speak with their leaders. If they agree to meet, then we will do so in a place of your choosing. I promise I'll do my best. Goodbye. Safe journey, Water Stellar. We will hold on to the piece of the disk you found in the temple. If the Winged Demons, the Elation, agree to meet us, we will bring the stone. Fair enough. And if you notice, that one dragon is starting to really inhale the other. It's halfway dead. Or eaten. 
Hey, we're back on dry land. I could really do with a change of clothing, like a bikini and a pair of sunglasses. There we go. Oh. Ooh. All right, April. What's your thoughts on finally being dry? Got a couple pages. Okay. I am the water stiller. How strange it is to be so insignificant, yet so important. There are so many who have been waiting for me, or somebody like me, to come and bring hope into their lives. It's truly amazing. And even more amazing, I'm able to cope with it. I'm still in denial, no question about that. But I'm warming up to the idea that I'm actually not just some tiny speck of dust in the cosmic infinity, infinity but a person with a mission, with a place, with a purpose. Right now, my purpose is to find the elation and to reunite them with the Miram so that both species can thrive once more. That done, I can find out what the elation know and then pay a visit to the sleeping god of the Miram. I'm counting on this guy being one of the kin. If not, I have no idea what to do next. <clears throat> Early Saturday morning. Back home at this time, I'd be safely snuggled up in bed, safe in the knowledge that it's Saturday. I've got nowhere I have to be. I can just relax all day long. Maybe go to the cafe, hang out for a while, maybe go to the park, whatever. This all started a week ago yesterday. One week of mysteries and danger and strange, strange revelations about the very nature of the cosmos. And I'm still reasonably sane. At least that accounts for something. Now I know there's an Alation village somewhere on Alaeus. The question is where and how do I get there? If the Miram and Alation used to live close to each other, the village should be somewhere down by the sea. Maybe right around the corner? Yeah, think about that. A week ago, this whole thing started. Ooh, look at that jungle. I could get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. Yeah, let's not go do that yet. Through the arch. It's the village of the giant crabs. Hey, that sounds like a great name for a B-movie. <laughs> village of the giant crabs. <laughs> Clear, unpolluted waters, overflowing with life. Just one more reason why Arcadia is both the vacationers and environmental activists' wet dream. Literally. Uh-oh. It's some kind of giant crab. It sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. Yeah, the shell does look way too tight. Maybe he's outgrown it but can't shed it. Or whatever it's called. Oh, and he's crying too. Sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. I'll just take a shot here and ask you. Is there any chance you speak, like, a real language? Like, um, Arcadian or English? Okay. Now, is there some kind of magic I have to learn, or potion I have to drink, or eat, or ingest in some way to learn your language? Because that's usually how it goes. We're gonna take that as a no. Note. <laughs> Too bad, although I'm glad I don't have to draw blood or swallow a stone or something. Can't help but feel that you're asking me for help, though. It's the strangest thing. After all, you're just clicking your claws, aren't you? It's not as if you're really talking, is it? Well, all right, April, you got something on your mind? Because you did something in your diary. I found this crab-like creature on the beach, and it looks like it was in pain, like it was getting slowly strangled or something. It was really sad, but I couldn't do anything. The thing is just too big and solid for me. I need somebody to help me. Somebody big and strong. Where do I find a person like that on an island like this? Hmm. Well, let's go check out the... What is that? The top half of the statue depicts a creature with a big mouth calling out. Okay. The bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large ears listening to something. Huh. Okay. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's a creature with large ears. It's an old fireplace. 
can see clear to the bottom. This really is an excellent spot for fishing. Okay. I don't think we can do anything up here. So there's this strange statue thing. So let's see what else we can do. Yeah, he's really whining. How much we can do on that, unfortunately. Oh, another statue thing. The bottom half of the statue depicts a large-eared creature listening intently. The top half of the statue depicts a big-mouthed creature calling out. It's the ruins of an old city. Can't go anywhere that way. Dense jungle. There's a hole. Okay. It's a tiny tree. It's a deep hole. More like a crevice, actually. Caused by some kind of seismic activity. Hmm. God, it must be at least 50 meters down. The crevice widens out into a huge cave just below. And there's water at the bottom. Huh. Well, we have rope. Will this work? Nope. Okay. Well... We need to explore more. So the question becomes... Hey, Crow is around. April! You're alive! You're here! You're soaking wet! Yes, she is. Where did you go? I thought you drowned. I was completely miserable. And the chicks on this island are so prissy. They don't even care for a kiss unless you're all settled down with a nest in your own territory. <laughs> oh, we love Crow. Glad to see you haven't lost the gift of the gab, Crow. Lady? You have no idea how limited bird Twitter can be. It's all, hi this and here I am that, all damn day long. I haven't had a decent conversation in days. Well, you're making up for it now. I never know when you're gonna go AWOL on me again. Yeah. We were kinda... I had a little adventure under the sea. Oh? I didn't know humans had gills. We don't. Well, I do. I think. At least I can breathe underwater now. Cool. Not as cool as being able to fly, of course, but still. Hey, does that mean you're a mermaid? <laughs> Hardly. I don't have a tail. What did you do after I saw you last? Well, it took a while, but I found lamb. Not this island, just a rock with a couple of trees, basically. But when I went back to tell you, you disappeared. I thought you'd gone bonkers from thirst and hunger and drowned yourself or something, so I decided I'd better find solid ground myself or I'd suffer the same fate. And then I found this place. Nice, isn't it? And the best part is, there are no hunters. Only a bunch of big crabs on the east side of the island and a volcano. I'm gonna walk around for a bit, Crow. I'll just stay here and preen myself, thank you very much. Well, how about you do us a favor? Because we can't do anything. I could get lost if yeah. I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. Well, Crow... With Crow around, a girl can feel safe. That's right. Crow can probably explore. He's been here a couple what days. What can you tell me about the island, Crow? Only what I've been able to see from above. There's a volcano, dead I think, and lots of jungle. And some nice beaches. I'd like to explore the jungle, but I'm afraid I'm going to get lost. Any ideas? Well, I could stay airborne and keep track of where you are. That way I could direct you if... Sorry, when you get lost. <laughs> Sounds like a super plan, Crow. Let's go. All right. Oh, pretty straightforward. There's a the volcano. Wow. 
The rumbling is much fiercer here, and the ground is really shaking. It's definitely seismic. It has got to be emanating from this volcanic mountain. I mean, it looks dead, but it must be about to wake up or erupt or something. Right? Great. After surviving a shipwreck, being kidnapped by fishes, and learning to breathe in water, I'm about to die in a volcanic eruption? Isn't that ironic? Yeah. What's in here? It's a small, eye-sized aperture with a crystal in it, like a lens. Maybe some kind of telescope? Hmm. I don't see anything interesting. What a strange symbol. It's a keyhole. Hmm. Similar to what we saw on one of those statues. Okay, can't do anything there, it doesn't look like. That's one mother of a tree. It's got to be at least 100 meters tall. And what's that in the tree crown? Looks like a man-made construction. Huh. Can we go to it? Well, I guess we have to go to the jungle, maybe. Oh, there we go. Oh, there. The bottom half of the statue depicts a creature listening, while the top part depicts a similar creature calling out. Dry twigs and sticks. Dry twigs and <laughs> sticks. Anything in here? Ow! What? Shh. Who's there? Duh. <laughs> Shut up. I know there's somebody there. I heard you. Is she gone? <laughs> Nope. She's still around. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> if you won't come out, I'll just sit down here and wait. Sooner or later, you'll have to show yourself. So it clips! Oh my god! Ah! I hate this place. I so hate it, I can't even sit down without crushing the natives. Big person alert! Yeah. This is too freaky. You think it's freaky? What about us? There's a large human stumbling around on her lumpy, wobbly legs. That's what we proper-sized folks call a natural disaster. <laughs> Watch it. Nobody calls me large or lumpy to my face. Big bone, then. You're a bulldozer with a brain, lady. You're an accident waiting to happen. At least to us stick men. Yeah, okay. I'm assuming they're called Stickman. But... What's a Stickman? An unlucky bugger doomed to a miserable life of stiff backs and monotonous drudgery in the shadow of a mother tree. Happy little fella, ain't ya? You have no idea. <laughs> so, you guys are Stickman? That's right. I'm Wick. This is Willow. And that dumb-looking one over there is Woody. And this is our mother tree. Okay. What's a mother tree? What do you mean, what's a mother tree? It's a mother tree. How difficult can it be? It's our mother, and it's a tree. It's a mother tree. Okay. And what do you do? Yeah. What do stickmen do? <clears throat> what do we do? What do we do? What do you mean, what do we do? Well, the people in this world always do something. Like the Bonda dug tunnels in the earth. The Maram killed Snapjaw and covered their houses with Tan Yen. You gotta do something. Hey, it ain't easy being a stick, let me tell you. You got your stiff back and limbs. Your fear of fire and water. Your 300 years of miserable boredom. And then you have to get planted and raise a family. It ain't easy. <laughs> so, you're not doing anything worthwhile then. Lady, I'm miserable. I'm grumpy. And I got a headache. What do you want from me? Well, yeah, do you know about the Alation? Where do the Alation live? The Alation? The guys with wings? Up in the volcano. There's an old city in there. I think they're squatting. <laughs> yeah, and how do we get up there? How do I get into the volcano? You don't. 
the road collapsed a few centuries ago. And when traders come, the elation fly down to meet them. Nobody goes up there anymore. Great. Yeah, what about this rumbling noise? What's that constant rumbling noise? Lady, you have no idea what we have to endure. All day, all night, that noise is just murder. It all started when Kwaman, the quiet giant, would you believe that's what we used to call him, <laughs> was banished by the Orowal from his perfect fishing place to some remote place in the forest. Whoa, information overload. Let's step back for a minute to fill in the details. Yeah. Who's Kwaman, the quiet giant? He's the scariest human we've ever seen. He stands tall as a mountain and uses whole trees for toothpicks. But he was the quiet type and reasonably gentle for a human. He'd spend his days out by the Orowal village, catching fish and frying fish and eating fish, and looking out across the ocean, dreaming about loose women or whatnot. <laughs> yeah. What happened to get the quiet giant banished from that place? The Orowal got scared when he accidentally stepped on one of their young ones. He didn't do any real harm, but they banished him from their village nonetheless and told him to go far into the forest. Okay, and who are they? Orowal. Who are the Orowal? Orowal. They're the crab-like creatures who live down by the sea. Ah, they're nice people, if a little crabby. And it's hard to understand what they're saying half the time. Where's Kwaman now? Somewhere in the forest east of here, we don't know where exactly. He went there to get as far away from the Aura Wall as possible. So what does all this have to do with the rumbling noise? <laughs> oh, I was getting to that. If you just let me get a word in edgewise. I just had some questions is all. Anyway, Kwaman is the brooding type. And he takes everything so to heart, he got instantly depressed and went to sleep. And what is he doing now? Still sleeping. That's the problem. But how long ago was it that the Orlawal banished him? The last full moon. Nearly 30 sunsets passed. Wow. He's been sleeping for a month? He was depressed. What do you want, lady? Once I got so miserable I slept for eight years. <laughs> And let me tell you, those eight years were the happiest of my life. Yeah, well, yeah, how do you, yeah. How can you sleep for eight years? With these morons around? I'm not even going to answer that question. <laughs> no, really. Eight years? Us stickmen grow to be hundreds of years old. Eight years is nothing. Yeah. But still, eight years is almost half my life. You're a baby. When you grow up, you'll understand. <laughs> I still don't understand what this has to do with the rumbling noise. See that statue over there? Sure. What's up with that? Back when the Dalmari lived on this island ages ago, they put these statues up all around the island so that they could speak with each other. You're kidding. So they're, like, telephones? Tell her what? <laughs> I don't know what that is. The thing is, these statues are all connected through magic. And when you speak into one, your voice flies through the air and comes out of another statue. But I still don't understand... You saw the big head up by the mountain? Yes. That's the one they use to talk to everyone on the island, to warn people of storms or to hold evening prayer. It's connected to the statues as well. And Kwaman is sleeping right next to a statue's ear. I get it. Resonance. He's snoring and the deep bass reverberating through the loudspeaker, the big head, causes a resonance that vibrates the entire island. But can't you just wake him up? We don't know where he is. We're not much for exploring this forest. There's water and fire and monkeys. Monkeys like to play with sticks. We don't like monkeys. <laughs> but can't you just, well, send your voice to his telef... statue to wake him up? There are four problems with that. 
Number one, all the statues have an assigned symbol, an identifying mark, but we don't know which his is. Second, most of the statues are broken in some way or another. What do you mean? Some statues can only talk to certain other statues. Some can't be spoken to, and some can't hear. Which makes it very difficult to get a connection through to where you want to send your voice. Of course. Number three. In order to use the statues, you need a key. We don't have it. We don't know where it is. And number four? We're stickmen, lady. What do you think? We don't know much about magic or magical devices. And, and... And what? Uh, we're not too smart, okay? <laughs> there, I said it. We're not too smart. And when you look at Woody over there, who's pretty stupid by Stickman standards, that's a pretty scary thought. Sorry I asked. Alright, so information dump. Let's see what she has to say, and then we will prepare to wrap up this episode. Saturday, around noon. Found out why the island keeps rumbling. It's not an imminent volcanic eruption, and I'd, as I'd feared, but rather the snoring of a very, very large man transmitted through a kind of telephone to a large speaker in the middle of the island. With all the snoring going on, nobody's getting any work done, and that's a bad thing. So we need, no, I need to wake this guy, Kwaman, up. Somehow. And the key to this? What? Puzzle? The key to this puzzle is, I think, these telephones that are scattered around the island. Uh, let's go up here real quick, just to see what's up here. And then we, uh, as I said, we'll prepare to wrap it up. So there's a wooden crossbow. It's a big wooden crossbow, I guess. I wonder who built it and what it's for. If I could somehow get across to that path on the other side, I'd probably be able to make my way into the Alation village. Yeah. Well, let's just talk to them real quick about this thing up here. Yeah. Who built that big crossbow in the tree? I did. Well, I thought of it. And these two nincompoops gave a helping twig on the, uh, manual side. So they built it, and you supervised? Yep, but it's not done. There are still a few pieces missing before we can blast off for Luna. Uh, what? Did you say blast off for Luna? That's what I said, Luna. As in the moon? <laughs> the same. You intend to go to the moon using that thing? Lunar cannon, and yes. That's the plan. You guys are loonies! If by loonies you mean visionaries, then yes, yes we are. <laughs> yeah, and why aren't you working on How it? How come you're not working on your lunar cannon now? Because of that infernal noise is why! So, if the noise stops, you'll go back to work on your cannon? That's the plan. Alright. I'll see you guys later then. If you don't step on us first. Alright, so we need to get that lo the lunar cannon functioning. And they won't work on it, obviously, until the rumbling stops. So that is our next goal in the next episode, is to get the snoring stopped. And to get them to finish up their cannon. So I will see you all next time. Until then.